Oh, good, mate. As we come into uh, our last live stream of the uh, of the evening, we have the East Fremantle uh, Lacrosse Club up against the Sturt Lacrosse Club. Winner of this will certainly find their way into the one-two playoff tomorrow, and the uh, loser will have to uh, wait on a uh, potential count back. Given uh, Woodville drew two games today, so uh, I think uh, the mathematics is sort of out there that if uh, Sturt win this, they go straight through, and then there'll be a potential count back with uh, East Frio and and Woodville. But uh, if East Frio can get up, uh, that may be enough to uh, send Sturt through to the uh, final as well. So we're about to uh, start action here as we see Bronkhorst up against Hill in the uh, in the centre face-off here. And uh, it is uh, almost finals action. Here we go. Ball being set. And it is game time. Ball won by Hill. Hill kicks the ball to Winnen. Winnen kicks the ball down the back, straight back up here to uh, Jack Waller. Jack Waller will uh, work the ball over to uh, the lefty there, Nathan Twisk. Twisk kicks the ball down the back to Kernahan. To Winnen, up to Mikey Forbes. James Howe looks to run down the right hand post, looks to step inside. Jack Waller just uh, backing off up the top there, trying to get into a shooting space. Mike Forbes trying to get inside, kicks the ball over to Howe. Howe up to Twisk, Twisk has Waller. And Waller will find the ball over to Winnen. So good movement here from uh, the Sturt boys. Little flip down the back here to Howe. Howe trying to get in, crushes in. Good uh, defense there from East Fremantle. And I reckon East Freeman, oh, just a big body on the outer side there from uh, Mikey Forbes. Just uh, pushing the Broncos around. Ball kicks down here to Winnen. And uh, they'll head around the horn again. Ball down. Finds uh, Forbes. Mikey kicks the ball up to Jess. Jesse. Up to Jack to Twisk. And uh, that's just on the uh, wrong so wrong hip there for uh, James Howe. And uh, back into a defensive end, uh, the Sturt boys will come. And uh, we'll... Uh, as uh, just uh, stop in time here. So ball will start down in the back corner. In the stick of uh, Bronkhorst. Bronkhorst will uh, move the ball down as he tries to uh, get through. Didn't happen, gets stripped, winning. Smart lacrosse player, made the world box side, pops that one over to the right, and that's going to be a uh, East Fremantle ball. As the uh, keeper there in Guari Rees gets the back up. And the ball will uh, head back into the offensive end for Fremantle. East Frio looking to get through. Does try to get through there. Tegan Hirsch just uh, gets through the uh, defensive ride. And ball now in the stick of Sean Levy, who kicks it over there to Jensen. Jensen kicks the ball to Martella. Jed pops the ball down to uh, Tony. Tony down the back. Finds Kennedy. Kennedy just uh, kicks the ball to Levy. And uh, subs come on. And that's uh, Lachlan Wills just uh, coming on off the bench. Ball up to Martella. Guarded here by Jack Waller. Martella under pace. Steps inside. Not there. Pops around. Oh, Williams. Mitch Kennedy just... Uh, Getting in on the cage and Kilford with a good save there. Sam Kilford passes the ball up and uh, Jack Waller and Jed Martella will have a uh, 
half foot race to get over the halfway line. And uh, Jack will throw the ball up here to Nathan Twisk. Twisk back to Waller. As, uh, just uh, slowing the offense down here so they can get some uh, substitutions on as Matty Forbes comes out. We see uh, Ryan McCauley up the top. Was a goal scorer last night. Looks to Waller. Waller steps into Twist. Twist pops one away. And there's the first of the game. Nice little, uh, just, just drew off the uh, right-hand side there as a lefty and uh, popped the ball into the back of the net. And uh, scoring first there are Sturt. They are on the board first. And that is through the uh, stick of Nathan Twisk. 1-0 it is. So Twisk with the opening score of the game. Ball back into the centre. Bronkhorst up against Hill. Set. Zach. Good work there from Aaron Hill. Just flicks it back out to Jacob Newman. Jacob Newman running the ball into offence. Kicks it to the goal scorer in Twisk. Twisk. Just uh, takes the ball down the back. Waits for the subs to come on. McCauley with the ball. Kicks it down there to Winnen. Winnen. Back down to Twisk, and they start their offense. So Twist picked up the shorty on as the uh, good inside look there to uh, McCauley. McCauley just uh, throws a uh, bullet to uh, Forbes down the back there. Mikey good enough to uh, get it in his stick. Twist looking to work on the left, getting around, looks up. Kicks it to Forbes. Forbes looks for Newman. Newman goes to shape to shoot, but uh, well shut down there by the defence. As uh, we see Ryan McCauley throwing uh, bombs, but uh, only as far as the uh, defender in front of him. As the ball goes out of bounds, and he gets his own first on. Ball back up the top to Winnen. Winnen picked up there by uh, Richards. Ball down to Twisk. Twisk looks to attack the shorty. Rolls back around, kicks it back to Winnen. Winnen throwing bombs, and that's come off the back there of uh, Joseph Manning. And Manning, nothing better than that on a cold night. Just wearing one straight into the uh, into the back. But uh, that's what they're, he's there for, and he says, keep, I gotcha. And uh, ball goes out of bounds, backed up there by Sturt. So another opportunity here for... Uh, the Blues, or the Devils, I should say. Ball thrown at uh, Mikey Forbes' feet, just uh, having to uh, dig a hole to uh, pick that one up. Ball gets down the back. Good work there from McCauley. Kicks it back to uh, Newman. Newman finds Twist. Twisk under immense pressure straight away. Kicks the ball back down. Good pick up there. Who uh, just uh, trying it one handed there is winning, winning, attracting a crowd, steps inside, but uh, doesn't step uh, that far inside, finds himself in the crease, and the ball will turn over and come down to an offensive situation for uh, the uh, East Rio Blues. And they'll come out here through Tristan Jensen. Jensen has a set of motors on those legs, and uh, Ollie. Kernahan just uh, picks him up. And uh, the ride is on to Guari Reeves. As uh, we see out the outer side here, it just popped out the back there is Levy. Levy looks inside, finds Jed Martella. Here's an opportunity for uh, Frio under, under pace. Pops it five hole. And uh, Jed Martella made something out of nothing there. That ride... Just allowed to uh, get the ball over the back here. And uh, we're going to have a timeout here as actually that might be uh, the first quarter done. 
So uh, first quarter is done and right on the uh, death knell there, we get Jed Martella getting his first. And we're in a one all game. So uh, Twisky with one for uh, Sturt and uh, East Fremantle with uh, one from uh, Jed Martella there. And uh, right on the uh, death knell of the first quarter, we've got a one all game here. And we are uh, going to uh, just have a look at the uh, coaches going through a couple of uh, conversations here. Scotty Gill up on the... Uh, Scotty Gill up on the uh, scaffold up there, getting some really good shots. He uh, knows how to work a camera. He knows how to work a computer. And uh, tell you what, without him, you don't hear me, which is uh, really good. So as the boys break here for second quarter action, And the face-off uh, players are about to be set. Goalies take uh, their respective ends. Zach Tremlett will get play underway. Marte sorry, Bronkhorst with the ball. Oh, just gets nailed there by uh, the muscle man that is uh, Jack Waller. And Jack Waller gets the ball back in his stick. Twist gets to the exposition. As the two uh, Forbes has come on, Mikey's the first one to touch it and Matty will be the next. So Matt Forbes kicks the ball down here to Nathan Twisk. Kicks the ball over there to Jack Waller. Twisk looking to get on his left hand side. Waller looking to uh, roll out. Good take there from Waller. Steps inside, just needed to take another step there. Did uh, Jack Waller not qu quite getting up above the uh, restraining line to shoot that one. Comes off the tank, tank, tank bar and ends up uh, going out of bounds with the first on. And Lockie Wills will bring the ball into uh, offence for East Frio. So East Frio heading down into uh, the offensive end. Ball is in the stick there. Now of Bronkhorst. Kicks it up there to uh, Kennedy. Kennedy. Kicks it back to Wills. Wills looks down the bottom. Under pace there is Martella. Martella looks to work against uh, Matty Forbes. On the left-hand side, Forbes just forget allowing him to get top side and uh, fires that one to the uh, past the left-hand post. Good pace there from Jed Martella, who uh, just managed to uh, get top side of that contest. What you want to do as an offensive player, be able to free the hands. Steps around, oh, gets nailed on the back corner there. There's Lockie Wills from uh, Mikey Forbes. And uh, ball goes out of bounds. Shot had. And we're going to have a timeout here. Charge to uh, Sturt. And uh, coach uh, Robert Lawson, not happy with what he's seen out there. So calls the uh, timeout to have a quick conversation about their offensive set. And uh, the ball is uh, going to be with Sturt. We uh, just started the uh, second term here. With the uh, five minutes uh, 51. And we have a... Uh, as the uh, guys come out of the uh, huddle for the um, time out here. And Sturt will start with the ball. Sorry, East Fremantle will start with the ball. So ball in the, uh, down in the X position. Kicks the ball up here to Jed Martella. Jed Martella back up here to uh, Kennedy. Kennedy. Takes on Ollie North. Ollie North just uh, turns him backwards. Kennedy just fires a bullet through the centre. 
And uh, misses uh, his uh, offensive opponent there. Ball kicks back to Bronkhorst. Bronkhorst goes to work on the shorty. Looks down, just uh, not playing. It's a very scrappy lacrosse at the moment. Not uh, not free-flowing at all. The ball's going to go out of bounds. I reckon that one might have come off a uh, Sturt stick, so it's going to stay in. No. Being told that that's come off a uh, an East Fremantle stick and uh, Levy down there not uh, really uh, happy with that call as he gives the ball up. And we're going to have a uh, bit of a uh, stop clock here as the uh, two... Uh, Officials come together to uh, just work this shit out. And uh, let's see what they come up with. So it's going to be a, uh, a Sturt ball down on the bottom corner. Going to be with Hansford. Hansford. He's got some motors, but uh, he'll need him to get past Levy. Hansford looks in the middle, kicked it to... Uh, Tries to uh, open up some, uh, as uh, McCauley picks the ball up, kicks it over to Win and Win, and he fight. He doesn't need uh, an excuse to uh, fire a ball as that one's coming about 100 kilometres an hour off the uh, light pole. And ball comes up the top here with Mikey Forbes. Oh, he's worn the uh, whacker bounce there. And... Uh, Ball comes back up the top here to uh, McCauley. McCauley. Ball back up to Forbes. Forbes over to uh, Twist. And Twist uh, just looking to get on the left-hand corner here. Turns his uh, defender back here to Jack Waller. Waller picks up on the right hand. Oh, he's just throwing it straight in the back of the net. That's probably not where you want to shoot. Probably the other side of the net would be much, uh, much better. And... Uh, Ball is uh, coming up the centre. Good uh, pick up there from uh, Levy. And Levy will uh, find his way and just settle some offence here. And uh, ball will come in as I'm getting some, uh, some advice. And I'm going to be joined here by uh, Mark. Cockerton from the PLL. Mark, uh, welcome to uh, the Australian Lacrosse Network, mate. Awesome. Thanks for having me. No, it's beautiful. What do you what do you think of uh, the facilities out here at the moment? They're uh, rather nice under the uh, lights. Yeah, I love it. Nothing like a little, uh, little Saturday night lights. Uh, just got in this morning, um, so looking forward to it. The facility's been great. Uh, nothing better, perfect weather to play a little bit of uh, nighttime lacrosse. It is indeed, and uh, the, uh, the weather's... Uh, you said you just got in this morning? Yeah, yeah. we uh, had a camp out in Melbourne uh, this past week. Yep. Went really well. So uh, we have another one here in Adelaide at Glen Elg uh, Monday to Thursday. So really looking forward to that. So you've come to the right place then in Adelaide because uh, the weather's always beautiful here. Melbourne, you got four seasons in one day <laughs> as the ball just turns over here, coming back through Forbes. Uh, obviously out here with the camps, uh, how, did the, how did the Melbourne camps go? That was, it was awesome. Uh, I can't say enough about it, honestly. The kids were great. Uh, they battled all week, um, you know, got a little good, a lot, of, a lot of coaching in, a lot of training in. Hopefully they learned some things, had a little bit of fun. And uh, again, looking forward to kind of transferring that over to the uh, this week in, in Glen Elg. Yeah, well, it's fantastic to have you uh, in Australia, mate. And uh, who else have you come out here with? Uh, some of the other PLL boys? Yes, yeah, so we got myself. Um, we have Pat Rash, who plays for the Carolina Chaos. Uh, and then we have Lizzie Coulson, who plays for Team USA and plays uh, professional uh, Because Lizzie, Lizzie was over in Japan not long ago with the uh, PLL. Uh, were, yeah. you, were you over there with those guys? No, so I was just telling the guys, I, I should have went, uh, had the opportunity to go. I kind of do a lot of coaching on the sides, which is why I didn't go. Uh, but, yeah, Lizzie was over there, um, battled it out with, the, with Team Japan. Uh, but she's one of the best, plays Team USA, gold medalist. So... Uh, really fortunate to have her coming out and coach the girls. She's, um, I know uh, we, we had a team from South Australia over there playing against the PLL and Japanese sides that went over. And my son was lucky enough to be in that as the keeper. And uh, I know that they had uh, had spent spent a couple of nights with the US, uh, both men and women, and said that uh, had an absolute ball in Japan. So uh, yeah. 
Yeah, but it's not as good as Australia. What have you? What, what are your thoughts on Australia? First time out here, is it, or you've been out the, here before? Yeah, this is the second time. So I came out in uh, 2022. Uh, uh, just went to Melbourne though. So this time, first time to Adelaide. Um, I, I mean, I love it. I mean, I can't say enough about it. Uh, my parents came out here. My brother and sister have been out this way, so they kind of forced me to come out, and I'm so glad that I did. Uh, it, it really does remind me of Canada, though. You know, pretty laid back culture. Um, you know, just just really friendly, uh, you know, laid back people. So I, I feel at home here. I love it. Uh, can't wait to be back again. Yeah, it's, well, it's obviously great to have uh, guys of your ilk out here j teaching some of our up and coming uh, young superstars. And uh, it's any time we can uh, think bigger to be bigger here in Australia. I mean, we've always batted well above our weight in the world. Yeah. Um, given we literally do this on a Tuesday and a Thursday night and play on a Saturday and don't have that sort of college system. But uh, there's some, uh, there's certainly some talent out here at the moment. And uh, just having your expertise coming out with the other boys uh, and girls uh, will certainly uh, help lacrosse in this country. So it's a, it's a fantastic uh, concept by yourself and, the, and everyone involved. Absolutely. No, I mean, I'm all, all about growing the game. You know, I've been playing since I was three years old. So whatever I can do to kind of better the game, uh, I'm all in for it. So. As we watch a little over and back call there, see the boys push uh, push a little tempo here. And this is what I love, the two long bomb. stick. That's a two Bang. bomb. <laughs> that would have been a two bomb in the PLL. Yeah, well, we need to get that out here, don't we? <laughs> Outside the 15 meter arc of, uh, so what is the two bomb in the uh, PLL? It's 15 so, meters? Or? Yeah, so it used to be 16, uh, We, I mean, Canadian, we go by meters, but yep. in the States, we go by yards. So yep. it's 16 yards. And then they moved it to 15 actually last year. So, okay. so they're making would that it be easier. 14, 14 meter? Yeah, yeah, 14 meter. Something Give like that. Take. Give or take. So they're so, making it easier. Yeah, oh, it's, as uh, we see it's a, a goal good. there from Jed Martella. It's a good on the run shot. Um, but no, 14 meter seems somewhat close, but on the on the PLL goalies, they're so they're dialed in. It's pretty tough. Yep. Um, unless you're one of those poles shooting, you know, 110 miles an hour. It's it's pretty tough to beat those guys from that far out. It is indeed. So, uh, and it, you're currently playing for for the uh, Newark Atlas. Atlas. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So there was a there was another guy that uh, came from Australia, I believe. Uh, the big koala was yeah. playing with the Atlas. Yeah, uh, Callum Robinson. Callum uh, Robinson. Yeah, he used to be on the Atlas. Um, I yeah I, I wasn't on the team when he was there. Oh, I was were? playing on a different team. Yep. Uh, at that point, but I, I battled him at the uh, the World Games in 2018 in yep. uh, is in Israel. Israel. Yep. Um, yeah, he got me on a couple good chops there in the he arm. Uh, yeah, they don't feel too good. <laughs> don't feel koala. too good. Yeah. I ran, I ran into him in San Diego. Went over for the uh, for the World Championships this year, and uh, yeah, managed to uh, run into uh, Cal. We. Uh, How was that? Ah, oh, he's always good. Cal and I get on really well. It's um, yeah. He, he obviously didn't uh, play with the uh, Aussie side in uh, in uh, 22, 22, 23, 22, 23. I think it was moved to twenty three because, because of COVID. Of COVID. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, it's always good when I catch up with Cal and uh, have a uh, quiet uh, internal icing session. Wait, what was that? Have an internal icing session. <laughs> The big boy. Yeah, he gets. Yeah, he he throws the lumber there pretty yeah, good. He does indeed. And um, so you played in Israel. Yeah, yeah. We had a uh, tough, tough, re a really tough loss actually to Team USA in the final. Yep. Uh, one goal. Um, just yep. kind of got. With limited time on the clock, I remember sitting here watching that yep. one live. Yeah, that one still stings. Yep. Honestly, that was always my uh, kind of my dream to uh, score the game-winning goal uh, for Canada, and yep. I, I had it. Uh, I had the eight-seven goal to go up uh, for Team Canada, and they uh, we kind of got screwed a little bit by the refs there, and we lost. Tommy Schreiber scored a game game winner with like the back there. Just less to... than a second left. There was a clock issue, but uh, yep. you know. Yeah, what I can must, you do? I must say, I was watching that live here in Australia, and uh, yeah, I thought Canada had it. But um, you know what? Out of the uh, jaws of uh, victory comes yep. defeat sometimes. And uh, as I say, though they're hard to they're hard to make, let alone to win. Absolutely. But to be honest, it was an awesome experience. It's you know something I'll never forget. So. Um, so that you was know. your first uh, internationals in 18? Yeah, 18. Did you play uh, in Denver? 
Unfortunately, I was not at the 14 in Denver. I was uh, kind of an alternate on that one. Yeah. Um, and then I played the uh, the U20s uh, back in 2008. Um, and we, we also lost to Team USA in that one in the gold medal. So Bloody USA. Just, we just can't get them. Bloody you know? USA, that's what but, we say. But yeah. <laughs> we got them a few times, though, but uh, unfortunately not when I was there. So yep. sucks, but still a great, great experience. Is, yeah. You know what? The greatest thing about uh, lacrosse for me is uh, is – literally this it doesn't matter where you are in the world and it doesn't matter who you play for or what you play for it's a it's a real family absolutely in, in the end and, yeah. Um, yeah i'm sure these guys will go out they're kind of competing here on the field but once uh, once the game's done they'll be you know kind of kind of buddies out there in the clubhouse and a having a good time frothies, as we call it here 100 percent, 100 percent. it is so yeah so you've got the uh from monday to thursday this week Yep. Yep, down at Glenelg Lacrosse Club. Yep. Uh, and fully booked are you, or are there other uh, spots still available? There's a couple spots left if anybody uh, wants to kick in some last-minute registrations, but uh, great turnout, honestly. You know, I couldn't ask uh, really for more. Um, had a similar turnout in Melbourne, so it's just really cool to see. You know, we come down here. We, we can't come down here unless people register, so seeing them register... Um, and, and being able to come down here, I'm just really fortunate and just very excited to get after a little bit. As uh, we see a little bit of fancy footwork here from uh, Jensen coming down the other side here. He's got some wheels on him. It's all downhill. It's, it's all, yeah. optical <laughs> illusion. You should see me out there when I do it. <laughs> but uh, looks inside, doesn't uh, quite find Kennedy there. We uh, have a 2-1 game here. x currently up as we uh, just start the uh, third quarter. And uh, I'm joined here by uh, Mark Cockerton from the uh, PLL out here doing camps. Um, be glad to be out here too because uh, it might be, uh, what are we over in uh, US Canada at the moment? Is it uh, weather-wise? Where I'm from in Canada, it's uh, it's starting to warm up a little bit, but oh, we, uh, we kind of went through our winter uh in january february was a nice solid minus 30 so oh just a just a, just a tad bit minus 30 just a light just a light minus a light 30 cold. yeah just a light <laughs> a little brisk so out here this is like summer as we see oh this uh, is yeah it's gonna be 20 all week i can't i can't wait mitch kennedy using that's his a, bulk as we see a flag on the outer side there that's a big boy dodge right there he's uh just said i think i'm coming through this gate here and uh what was the what was the flag down there uh I'm just looking for that. There was a flag on the uh, play there. I don't know. Saw a flag throw. I didn't really yep. see what it was though. So we'll try to uh, push. So we got a, a 30 second push by the look of it in the box there. Might have been a hand on the back sort of push. Just we got to um, see what they can dial up on this man up here. They're running a little 3 3 action here. That's my favorite man up offense. There it is. Just needed to give himself another step up just to open that up a little bit. And uh, didn't quite there, did uh, Sean Levy. As the ball uh, starts down the back. So power play and man up action here. Kicks the ball up the top to uh, Kennedy. Kennedy to Martella. Ooh. Oh, flick nicely back. Oh, nice inside shot. look there. Oh, nice. Good shot and turn there from Tony Martella. That's the way you take a ball and pop it in and doesn't give the keeper much uh, of an opportunity there, Mark. No, it was a good shot. Once you're inside like that, you get that feed on the middle there. You got to kind of get it off quickly. So he did a good job. He knew where the net was. Uh, did a little kind of half spin there and, and put it on cage. So uh, after Monday to Thursday for the PLL camp here in Adelaide, down at Glenelg, uh, where two from there are you heading back home or are you staying around in australia having a bit of a look around yeah no i wish i was staying uh so i, I kind of do this stuff uh full time with the pll uh, okay. i travel all around the world uh coaching coaching kids so i'll be heading right to uh albany new york okay. doing another one there and then heading back to uh my uh my home country of canada so i'm heading out right after thursday night i think pat might be uh staying around friday okay but yeah not a not a whole lot of time here we kind of got you know, pretty busy schedule, so right back at it as soon as we leave here. Yeah, and this is where this we, is this gritty is right here. Like, this is where we want to be in it. Wanna GBs, be, GBs win games. Just want to be right in the action. I so said, don't get to play much anymore. Yeah. <laughs> at all. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's nice when you can uh, almost feel the uh, pressure of the game next year. As, See if we can get a little ride here. As Newman just uh, works his way through the uh, short stick pressure there of uh, Jensen. 
And uh, Newman kicks the ball up here to Mike. Are there, uh, are there shot clock rules here in this? Uh, there is absolutely no shot clock nothing. rules in, uh, in this. And uh, just with this particular competition, I don't know whether you know much about what's happening at the moment, but uh, there are four clubs who have turned 125 this year, which has created the 500 yep. tournament. It's awesome. And uh, East Frio have come over from, uh, from Perth for the weekend as Nathan Twist fires that one just uh, off the bar and uh, picked up there by Broncos. But uh, I'll tell you what, he's getting monstered yeah, down that, there. Yeah, that's a tough position to be in. You get that ball off that shot. You got swarmed with guys. As, uh, you got to pick it up and go. And Mikey Forbes kicks it up to Jesse Winnan up the top. So, um, yeah, the uh, concept here, but eight-minute quarters – uh, in this in this one, instead of the 15, I think the finals tomorrow, there'll be a 1v2 and a 1v2 as the shot goes over the top there and uh, runs out of bounds. And we'll go back to normal 15-minute uh, clocks, both in nice. men's and women's for tomorrow for the uh, 1v2. Where so what have we got for score right now? Score is 3-1. And uh, we see East Frio up. And, uh, okay. and in the context of the whole competition... I think if East Frio were to win tonight, that would then put Sturt and Woodville on an even par with points, as Woodville actually drew both their games today yep. and won one. So it'll come back to a bit of a countback, I'd say, on, uh, and it might come back to uh, a goal difference. And I know that uh, Sturt beat East Torrens 6-1 and Woodville beat them 5-1, so it might come down to just being a goal to not playing in a final. Yeah, so pretty similar competition here. Yep, yep. And uh, but the, the East Frio, uh, as we see a flag thrown here, might be an offside potentially. Yeah, it's a kind of a free possession. Oh, I thought you kind of had to go to possession there, but they kind of blow it down there. Just drop the ball as soon as you, yeah, in uh, obviously with Australia and like that. As soon as you drop it, quite offside. So we've got to turn over. Yeah, as soon as you drop it, or if you're not attacking the cage, you'll uh, they'll blow it up. But. Uh, that uh, ended up being an offside the other way, so okay. they needed to turn the ball over anyway. Yeah, to get the ball back, and Ryan McCauley picks I'll the ball. I'll step into up. that. And Jesse Wynn and he fires, just made the world the box side for the uh, third consecutive uh, World Championships. Did uh, nice. Jesse Winnan. As Jed Martella will bring the ball back into offense. Paul wants it here. He does want it. I'll tell you why he wants it, because uh, Tegan Harsh has uh, scored three already. Oh, this man. Weekend. And uh, at his compatriot, Tommy Richards, has scored a couple as well, both with the poles, both uh, 14 and uh, three. And young Jade Martell has got some motors on him down the back corner here, as does the uh, big frame of Mitch Kennedy, who steps in on Ollie North. Kennedy fires oh. that one, got some uh, pace. It's I like to see this little matchup right here. This is my favorite a little X matchup, shorty on shorty. Shorty on shorty. See what we can do here. A little off ball movement in the middle. Yeah, we got Twisky, who is, uh, I think he's trying out for the Hungarian box team. Yeah, I. Against Bronkhorst. Yeah, the bull v bull, isn't it? Yeah, I'd like to see him just kind of clear out here and just get a little one on one matchup with the shorty, but we're kind of going a little, a little short on short. I don't, I don't mind it, but. So this is, for me, the pace matchup of 14 and 9 with Martella against uh, McCauley. Good pick off there. Ooh, from that's the, tough. From that's numbers. Line. Mikey Forbes runs the uh, transition ball. Forbes bringing the ball down. Oh, needed to release it. Tries to uh, get through. Jesse winning. Smart. Pops. That's a good. Um... He's got plenty of time, does Jesse winning. And you can see here on the replay, you see Forbes just uh, getting down here. Almost uh, needed to release that a little bit earlier, but did find Jesse Winnan who pops the ball over. And we've got a 3-2 game with uh, limited time left in this uh, third quarter. It's a big time goal right there. And uh, Winnan, who uh, has a habit of doing that in this competition and every box competition. As I said, you can see the box player there. So 3 2, and uh, limited time as the clock comes on the field with uh, a uh, illegal procedure in the face. So, another opportunity here for Sturt to uh, just try and tie it up, getting uh, worked oh, getting... on by the pole. And here he goes. This is Tegan Hirsch. He doesn't mind uh, 
wearing a bit as a oh, he's going. stick. Oh, oh, I could take. Broken stick, I tell you what, that does. That costs you about 150 bucks for a new one. <laughs> and uh, and as much as the check, and uh, that is three quarter time. Oh. He's got some flow coming out the back there. As uh, I tell you what, you uh, just need to go and get a screwdriver and uh, take the head off and find a uh, another one. And I think, uh, have we got a time out here? Or is that, uh, that is, that is, uh, that is time out. So time out there called, uh, I wasn't sure. I saw the clock come on the field and the whistles were blowing left, right and centre. So an opportunity here to uh, try and uh, get another one for uh, East Fremantle. And uh, Sturt will, uh, had a big opportunity uh, to uh, almost turn that one over. And the longy, he wasn't uh, doing anything but heading towards the cage there, uh, Mark. Yeah. In Hirsch. <coughs> no, that was a good uh, that was a good play by that pole there. I like that. He really wanted it. Got a little flag down and see what they can do here. So four seconds left we're hearing in the uh, in the third term. So four uh, seconds, alright. So you either that's a that's a throw, catch, shoot, or just hold the ball and uh, take it from the uh, center and uh, play man up for 30 seconds in the next uh, little bit. Although it depends what he gave him there. Yeah, I, I guess the uh, the international rules oh, are different. On. No, there was no flag. Sorry, that was just uh, so four seconds. He's going to get going to need to get a shot off, and that's uh, a timeout just to uh, waste the timeout. I reckon. Apparently, yeah, <laughs> they kind of didn't draw anything up there, but. Anyway, so uh, what are what are the uh, what are the uh, young uh, superstars going to expect over the uh, next four days, mate? You're uh, looking, catching, throwing, rolling. You yeah. Know, you've got to, with keeping, looking at all the aspects of uh, of the game. Yeah, for sure. I think we we always want to look at it. Um, you know, we try to better every single position uh, first and foremost, um, and we always try to progress through it. So we start pretty basic. Make sure they can handle the fundamentals. Make sure everyone's doing everything correctly. Um, then from there, it's just about kind of battling through reps, feel more comfortable, uh, then kind of progress through some more advanced stuff. So, you know, Monday, Tuesday, a little bit more basic, and then we'll kind of progress through it uh, through Wednesday, Thursday, and they should learn a lot and uh, and should see a pretty good jump in their game uh, by by the end of it. And uh, you'd like to see the weather we had today for the four days. That would be great. That would be perfect. <laughs> yeah, 20 and sunny is what I'm expecting. And hopefully, hopefully that's what we get. But Sun's out, guns um, out. <laughs> sun's out, guns out. Get a little tan going, um, and then I can go back home and uh, go back to the cold. Just don't do what my daughter did and put a fake tan on last night. Cause, uh, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> she looks like she's seen too many rays at the moment. Yeah, don't do that. And uh, Those yeah. are big in Canada, though, in the winter because you got to – I don't do them, but, you know. Yeah, no, I'm the same, mate. Just uh, – Natural beauty. Yeah. I try to go south. Whatever I can. I guess it's different here, but yeah. in Canada, you want to go south in the in the winter, get a little tan, go to Florida, California, and uh, get a little get a little color. And you're going to stick with us for the fourth quarter, or are you? Uh... Yeah, what do we got? We got uh, one more. It's 3-2, right? 3-2. I mean. I mean, I can't leave this great game that we got here. What I, what I would love is to see golden goal, but we don't have it at the moment. I want to see, yeah. I want to see kind of a, a last second goal here just to win one yeah storm the field Big some epic would be sweet that's it well whoever win the, wins this will definitely book their uh, book their uh, place in the one two final tomorrow and we've got uh, east frio currently leading three two martella in the face up against hill picked up there by richards and richards will uh hear a whistle We're and he's have an yeah he's not happy about that oh, legal procedure as the uh defender or the attacker stepped over without possession. I don't know. Let him play. That's it. Yeah, that's Let a tough break there. So ball comes up here to uh, Jack Waller, and Jack Waller. He was uh, there's a couple of the guys who were over in uh, Japan. And nice. Young, uh, number five here, Jack Waller, was over with the uh, boys playing the PLL boys. Yeah, they had a good time. And uh, young Ollie Kernahan, number 52, who's uh, just popping out the other side as Waller comes down the right-hand side here. Good uh, slide there from the uh, stick in Hirsch. Looks back up the top. Nice catch from Winnen. Winnen just uh, 
got great ball control, does Winnan. Yeah, that's good to handle. And he will fire that every day of the week. Attacker's got to shoot, eh? You got your hands free, take it. So, uh, big dogs have to eat. <laughs> they do. So, Waller down the back. I love this matchup. Lots of space. Oh, I like it. Just a little get up above the 45 and uh, rip it around the corner. One more step there would have been huge, but he kind of had his hands free, so I don't blame yeah. him there. As I said, as a uh, as a coach, you love to see that uh, attacking, getting up that uh, high side. Yep. And able Increase the to angle. Free the hands, and uh, ball kicks up here to Nathan Twisk. Let's see a little pick action. Yeah, they uh, they're certainly running. Uh, it's almost a rotation back up, and they're just firing these 45s. <laughs> at the moment. It's got to hit the cage. I mean, it's a at, big net. At some at some point, there's a six by six there you want to put the ball in. And uh, especially at a uh, three two score line to try and uh, yeah. type it up. So, Matty. Yeah, I'd like to throw that down and go set a pick. Yep. So, ball comes down the back here to uh, Newman. Newman back up the top. Kicks the ball over here to Jack Waller. Jack Waller inside roll, looks to go top side, does it nice in, in a stick. Little one uh, coming off there, but Nathan Twist says, right, let me have a go. And uh, Twisky yeah, trying see, to mm. put him in a spin. Setting the pick, pull the pole there is a tough matchup. Look for these shorty matchups like this one. And Jesse Winnan, if he gets an opportunity to free his hands even from that space, he will. Good move. Oh, inside move and pops it away and evens it up. And we've got a three-all game here with about 5.20 to go in the fourth. If you're just joining us live and free on the Australian Lacrosse Network, joined by PLL's own Mark Cockerton. And, uh, mate, it's uh, great to have you down here and uh, on the live stream. Absolutely. No, that was a, that was a phenomenal move there. Uh, that's a little Canadian uh, box fake there. Right to the inside, a little face dodge. As I said, uh, Jesse Winnan uh, will, in Utica, compete in his third in a row for the Australian team as a box player. So yeah, looks like it. I mean, that's that was great. Three-time Australian uh, box player. And uh, pick up there from uh, Bronkhorst. So we've got a three-all game. Oh, oh, that's going to be a flag. A and uh, we, we're either going to see a cross-check here or a push. Let's have a look. Yep, push. Yeah, see, that's what we'll be teaching our uh, kids at camp not to do. Not to do? You know, you see a back, you can't. That's a free possession there. So that's what you get from uh, face-off players, mate. When yeah, that's that's tough. That's on. at this point in the game, too tied up. That's uh, that's a big time uh, mistake there. So an opportunity here and a man up uh, set as we see uh, Kennedy with the ball up the top center. Kennedy kicks the ball over to Jed Martella. Martella back to Kennedy. Kennedy. We'll uh, look to uh, move the ball, hopefully, for the 32nd uh, man up. Play looks inside, doesn't quite find Tony Martella. And Sam Kilford picks the ball up for, uh, oh, just a, oh, that was a fraught with danger. It still is fraught with danger, but good pick up there from Nathan Twisk. As, Go. Uh, Got numbers. Newman, just a good, good save, save in there from uh, Gawari Rees. And ball will come out here again. So uh, that 30-second penalty will uh, wipe off as it has already. And Hirsch brings the ball down. We've already seen him uh, want to uh, put a ball in the back of the net from about to 16 or 17 metres. Yeah, he goes every time he gets it. I like it. Aggressive. I, uh, I when I'm coaching, love poles who can get down and put pressure on a transition. And if they get to that point, goalies hate this ball coming out from that height. So hard to read. Oh, it's oh, a good low great. angle goal. Jed Martella, doesn't he like that one? I have to watch this one on the uh, replay. So Martella just uh, tries to get him down, rolls top side, gets inside that slide. Good finish. That uh, long stick slide really needed to come and uh, put a bit more pressure on it than uh, actually did happen there. Yeah, sometimes you have some good O. Uh, that was a, that was a good, good shot, kind of chalk one up there for the O guy. So Martella getting his uh, second of the game. And better than that, they're out to a 4-3 uh, lead now. So uh, we've had sort of three, four goals scored, and we've had two scored very quickly. 
So a 4-3 uh, game here. Ball coming the other way here from Sturt. Oh, great Good pick handle. up. Winning, just firing uh, heat Man. from 15, yeah, 15 metres. I got to rewatch that. That was a... Hill with a fantastic uh, out the centre. Picked up off the toes there from Winnan from 15 and just fired absolute heat to tie it up. That was slick. That was really nice hands there on that handle. And Jesse Winnan getting his uh, third of the game. And this is where the cream rises to the top when uh, pressure situations happen. For all game, we've got about a minute 38 to go. And uh, I'm not sure what a draw does here for uh, the sides and how that sits. Because, uh, But here we go. So Sturt looking to oh, win he's it. Going. Oh, he's going. He's going. Picks the ball up, fires, and uh, that's, that's going goalie. back. And that's going to be a goalie ball. And Mark Cockerton. Right on that one, mate. You. Uh, that was, yeah, I've been in that spot. It's a tough <laughs> one because you don't know if the pole is going to feed you, shoot it. He shoots, misses the net, and that attackman. Uh, he's probably going to take the blame for that one, not running it out, but that's a tough position to be in there. Look, as a coach, I go, you got to shoot that. Yeah. You know what? you got free hands. you got to shoot it. You're... you just got to hit the net. That's it. I know it's easy, but you just got to do it. So ball here with Tristan Jensen. So has he got the game winner? Looks back up the top. Not there. Kicks it to Bronkhorst. Bronkhorst looking to uh, pass the ball over. He does. He finds Levy. Who kicks the ball up here to uh, Lockie Wills. Lockie Wills goes a little right, a little left, and uh, gets shut down. Ball back up the top. Get it to your speedsters, one on one with the uh, shorties. Yep. And let them do their work. Got about 30 seconds here. I'd... Clock just coming on the field. So we've got a uh, four all game. So an opportunity here for East Fremantle to try and win it. Lockie Wills up the top centre. Guarded here by uh, Paddy Gray. Wills just looking to uh, kick the ball up into Broncos. Here's a shorty, shorty matchup. Hansford. And we've got a on. stall call on as well. We've seen there the stall raised up. That's quick. I'm going to say, are they, uh, they're just... Uh, and that is, uh, that is game, Mark. Four no all. overtime. No overtime. Don't worry. My favourite thing in commentating is to get a golden goal game. I've had three draws today, and I haven't been able to get up and about. <laughs> we, yeah, we gotta get a, we gotta get an overtime here. Sudden death. We, what are we doing? That's what we live for, isn't it? Sudden death. This, this, you know what? That's called life. Some, some you win and some yeah. you learn. You gotta, you gotta have a winner and a loser. Well, you know, we're, we got two draws here. I don't know. It, it just, it's almost deflating, isn't it? it? Just doesn't, doesn't seem like it's. Uh, the right uh, thing to do. Nope. But, uh, that is uh, that is uh, game over, and we're going to have a four-all draw. Wow! So that throws some uh, things into the competition because uh, East Frio and Woodville had a three-all draw today. Woodville and Sturt had a six-all draw today, and now we've had a four-all draw. It's wrong in yeah. any sense of any competition. Yeah, we got to uh, we got to change that. I tell you what, it we got to get some winners here. Is it? Uh, <laughs> it sets up the competition director, Mr. Uh, Luke Oswald, with a uh, bit of a uh, puzzle. A little pickle. You know what? I'm glad I'm not in his position. I'm glad I'm just uh, here having a good uh, conversation with uh, PLL's uh, Mark Cockerton, and uh, he's down here to do the uh, PLL camps here in Adelaide, and. Uh, Look at this uh, teammate looking after you too. That's a great guy right there. Hey, that everybody needs a guy. It's a good like teammate. That. It's a good teammate it right does. there. And I like the fact that uh, there is a uh, good Adelaide. Uh, Patty, you want to hop on the mic? There is good Adelaide, good Adelaide wines here. I mean, South Australia is well known for its uh, viviculture, and uh, and and it, there is never a bad drop that you could have down here. So uh, are you going to get out and about in Adelaide to see anything while you're down here? Of well, course. I know, I know you're tied of up course. with the PLL. Yeah, yeah no, I mean, everything. it's nice. Everything in Adelaide is pretty close. So we're going to, you know, do some beach days. Uh, you know, obviously we got our camp, but do some beach days, go go to the city, maybe go to a vineyard, something like that. Yep, yep. Um, we got to kind of tour around while we can. Um, you know, we're not here, obviously, too often. So we got to take advantage of it. And, uh, you know, it's part of the reason we're here is to be – 
you know, kind of a tourist vacationer. So uh, really looking forward to see what Adelaide has to offer for sure. Yep. Well, if you if you need anything, we can. Uh, I know a few blokes who Let's go. Uh, who have uh, uh, breweries and wineries. So uh, all over it if we need to. Thumbs up. Let's Got go. To. Oh, there we go. So just hearing some uh, news that with that draw, Sturt now will miss out on the one-two final tomorrow. No way. We'll, we'll get that confirmed, but... So if, uh, they, if they won, they would have been in? If they won that, they were in. As a draw, they potentially are out. Although I don't know how that works, because I know the there was a 6-1 game last night for ETP and a 5-1 game today, so I think it comes back to goal difference. I, we'll get that checked. I'm not going to... But you know what it does? just creates a little bit of ooh, love here yep. to uh, make it happen. But, um, yeah. Well, if that's the case, that sucks. I would have liked to see uh, see yeah. a victory there by one of the teams. but It is indeed. All right, well, we might uh, wrap it up here. Hey, uh, Mark and uh, the boys, good luck down at Glenelg. Appreciate uh, it. It's fantastic to have you in Australia and uh, bringing your uh, experience to uh, all of our young up-and-coming lacrosse players. Uh, and better than that, thanks for coming down here and spending some time on the mic and just uh, talking the fat so to speak. Absolutely. No, I mean, we love playing lacrosse. We love watching lacrosse. We love all things lacrosse. So uh, what, a, what, a, what a great day to kind of spend the night here. And, uh, again, really looking forward to getting down there Monday to Thursday and uh, doing our camp. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. And we'll talk about coming to see some of my mates because uh, they do have good breweries and good wineries. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Mark Cockerton, thank you for joining us here live and free on the Australian Lacrosse Network. Uh, big thank you to everyone that has helped out, Mr. Scotty Gill. Uh, in the background there, he was up on the camera. It's cold up there. I can see Scotty uh, chilling in his uh, in his uh, in his mouth. But uh, we've got a four-all game. We have more live action coming to you tomorrow from the Australian Across Network. It is finals day here in the uh, 500 tournament. My name has been Tony Watts. Until the sticks are swinging, we'll see you next time.